you're going to learn how to set up a blog that brings in millions of readers and hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue. And better yet, you're going to learn how to do it today with no designer, no developer, totally on your own, with as few complicated steps as possible. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh yeah, I've heard how to use WordPress before. We're not talking about WordPress. In fact, I don't recommend that you use WordPress. Just because it's the most popular way to build a website doesn't mean it's the best. And even if it saves you a few dollars a month in cost, it's gonna cost you a lot more than that in headaches. I made the mistake of using WordPress in a cheap hosting company, <coughs> Bluehost, and it almost cost me my entire site. So let's not make that mistake. Let's follow this method instead. We're gonna use a tool called Webflow because having tried every website builder out there, Webflow is far and above the best. It's the only one that gives you all the flexibility of totally designing your site from scratch while also handling all of the hosting, security, optimization, and other things that you don't wanna to have to deal with. It also makes it the easiest to update and change anything about your layout without having to rely on designers or developers to help you. You can do everything yourself. I also think that Webflow is better than WordPress for SEO or search engine optimization and for making sure that your site and your articles show up on the top of Google. Later in the video, I'm gonna share my exact SEO setup so that you can copy and paste it for yourself since that setup allows me to bring in an extra 7,500 to 10,000 visitors a day I might not otherwise get. So just go to natalizen.com slash Webflow to sign up. And now I'm gonna show you how we can start getting that site set up. One of the things I love about Webflow is that it makes it so easy to get started building your site with a template. And for this example, I'm gonna use the Denali template since it's a great look for a very simple blog that any of you could copy and use yourself. And you can grab it for free at natalizen.com slash Webflow dash Denali. And you can just copy it and start building your site together with me through the rest of this video. All right, so like I said, we're gonna to go to natalizen.com slash Webflow dash Denali here and then we can click use for free. I, if you don't have a Webflow account, you'll need to sign up for one and make one. I do, so I'm gonna log into that quickly. And then you should have this template popped up right here. You can click create project from it. And we'll call this blog setup preview for YouTube. And then it'll start making it for you. Now, the great thing about the templates is a lot of the design is done for you, the CMS is done for you, some of the optimization is done. It's gonna make this whole setup process way easier. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna think about making the homepage. Because the homepage is the first place somebody's gonna show up when they're looking for you when they land on your site. Super quick, simple things, obviously. Uh, you can replace your picture and some of your description. One cool thing with Webflow is it uses these things called symbols, where uh, something in this green is gonna be reused throughout your entire site. So if you edit your sidebar here, it'll edit it everywhere. So we only have to change things once. So we can open this up and we can say, we can add a description here. Nat Eliason is an aspiring YouTuber making a video for you right now. We could put in a new photo. It makes this super easy where we just hit replace image. And then you can, uh, you can even just drag something in like that. Boom. All right. That's in. This will pull in a couple of featured posts from your blog, so you can leave that. And then you can change some of these uh, links to be to you instead. So you click on this social icon link, and then if we go over here into settings, we can change the external URL. Hey, all right, so you've got all that. You could leave in this built with Webflow if you want, in case anybody's wondering. Uh, but now we've got that, we can change this header name. So just put your own name in there. And just like with the sidebar, if you change the header here, it's gonna change it everywhere on your site. So that makes it super easy. And then this is just gonna be a, a blog roll. And that's a really simple way to do your homepage if that's how you wanna do it. You could also change it to have a, just a landing page about you uh, if you wanna include that, but it's not necessary. So obviously it's not a blog without blog posts and it's pre-filled some sample ones for you here. So if we go over into this little CMS field, you can see there's this blog post category. And if we click on that, this is the CMS for our blog posts. And we can pop one open and this has all the info for the article. Now, uh, one thing to consider is that the CMS is gonna have some default fields like the name, the slug, the post body, uh, but you might wanna add some other ones based on how you wanna customize your site. 
So for me, uh, in my blog article section, I have a bunch of other fields that are not in the default setup. So I'm gonna walk you through adding those. So we'll click this little gear by blog posts and then we'll see what other things it has. It's got body, summary, main image, category, and whether it's featured. So that's a good start. We're gonna add a couple of others. Now, one thing that I definitely want are SEO title, description, and image. And that's because the title on your blog, you might want to be different from the title that shows up on Google. And this lets you customize that. So we can go down here, add field, plain text, SEO title. And we can make that required. We can do SEO description. We can make this multiple lines as it's longer text. Save that. And we can add SEO image. Uh, and this lets you set a custom image that'll show up on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere that the article is shared. Publish date, you could add two if you wanna specify a different date than what it puts in by default. But at this point, we're pretty much good to go. This is gonna get us uh, most of the info that we need. So we can save that collection. And then I'm just going to copy in a blog post as an example. Okay, now let's go see what that looks like on the actual site. Stage it for publish. That means it'll be ready for when we publish the site. And now we can go look at uh, how that page will actually look. So if you go to this blog post template, so you go back to page, blog post template, now we can see how the posts look by default. And honestly, this looks pretty good. I really don't have many changes to make. So this is the cool thing about Webflow is you can just kind of click around and edit the CSS for your entire site really, really easily. And if you're ever not sure how to do anything, there is this Webflow University where they just have tons and tons of free tutorials on how to use Webflow to make it as easy as possible to uh, change your site. So definitely recommend checking this out if you have any questions. One question you might have though is what should I write about? Well, that's actually gonna be one of the next videos in this series. So make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be going over how you can basically create a, an endless stream of topics to write about so that you never have to ask yourself that question. So again, be sure to subscribe to get that next video. One other thing that I definitely want to recommend though is uh, adding some sort of call to action for an email newsletter. And the reason for this is if you're building an audience for anything, then an email list is the best way to do it. Email gives you the most direct relationship with your customers way more than any social media account, more than YouTube, right? Email just makes it easiest to communicate with the people who are interested in what you're doing. Now for making and growing an email list, I really like ConvertKit and you can go sign up. It's just natalison.com slash convertkit and get it set up. And then once it is set up, you'll be able to really easily plug it into your site. One way is to embed a convertkit landing page or form in part of your site. So you can see I've got these, uh, these Power of Rome uh, email signups that are embedded on my site and are a standalone page. So if you go to powerofrome.com, you can actually see this is just a ConvertKit landing page that I have set up that feeds directly into the email list. But then I also have these inline forms that I use for collecting signups right within uh, other blog articles. And you can set these up really easily within your Webflow. So let's say that you sign up for ConvertKit, you wanna collect some newsletter subscribers. You can make one of these inline forms under landing pages and forms, and then you can go into your Webflow blog, find an article that you wanna add it to. Let's see, here it is, Rome, why I love it and how I use it. And then if we scroll down, I've got this embed code here where all you've gotta do is kinda of like hit enter onto a new line, hit plus, and then hit this embed, and this lets you paste in custom code. And this is just the copy paste from uh, ConvertKit. So you paste that in, and then uh, once it's in the blog post, you can see that the call to action to sign up is right there. So now somebody reading your post has a direct call to action to sign up. The other way you can do this is just directly through the Webflow built-in form system. So if you're on any page, discard those changes, like your homepage, you can actually add a, a form directly in Webflow. So if we scroll down here and we see uh, form block, you can drag that in and then you can uh, set it up to collect email addresses right on any page. Webflow will save those email addresses for you. So if you go into project settings, you go into forms, and you scroll down, you can see all of the recent form submissions that you're getting on your site. But then you can use Zapier, which is something I talk about in my video on uh, my favorite productivity apps. I talk about it in a bunch of videos because I just love Zapier so much. Then you can use it to automatically send signups from your Webflow site into your ConvertKit 
uh, newsletter. So for example, on my, on my website, whenever somebody signs up through one of the Webflow forms on natalison.com, they automatically get added to ConvertKit with the custom tag uh, of you know, Natalison for my site. Okay, so you've got your homepage set up, you've got your CMS set up, you've got an email newsletter that you're plugging into it in some fashion, either you know somewhere on your homepage, you could even add it like right here on the sidebar, or again, you could just plug it right into one of your posts. The last thing you need to do is connect a domain. And this is the one thing that Webflow doesn't do for you, but it's fine because they make it super easy. Uh, I really like Namecheap for this. So you can go to natalison.com slash Namecheap and what that lets you do is it lets you just really quickly buy a domain and then hook it into your site. Once you're in here, you can just hop into your advanced DNS and then all you've got to do is follow the instructions that Webflow gives you for setting up uh, your blog domain. So if we go in here, we go to project settings, then we go to hosting, and we scroll down and just do the custom domains. You just add a site plan and then it gives you some really clear instructions on exactly what to do on Namecheap's end to get that URL pointing to here. It takes you maybe a minute or two, super simple. And once you do that, you're ready to start putting your site out in the world. You've got a homepage, you've got your blog CMS, you've got a way to collect emails and you have your domain. Those are the core things that you need and you should be able to do all of them in 30, 60 minutes, right? This design, you know, that we started off with is totally fine to get started. It looks way better than what my blog looked like when I got started. And so if you're just starting with the default Denali kind of out of the box, you're still gonna be doing really, really well. You're gonna be looking better than a lot of other blogs. Part of that building on it over time is gonna be creating really, really great articles to go on it that are gonna bring in those hundreds of thousands or millions of readers over time. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video is all about how to build that writing habit, never stop writing so that you keep making your blog more and more valuable. So be sure to subscribe to make sure you get that video. Also, if you haven't watched it, be sure to check out my video on how to use your life-changing blog to launch a six-figure business on the side. Uh, it's a really good model for getting started experimenting with side hustles, and it should give you some inspiration for what you'll be able to do now that you've started building this site for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.